How's it going, everybody? Welcome back. Today, I'm excited to share another Super 7 Ultimates with you, this time from 2001, A Space Odyssey, The Moon Watcher. And this is the only figure in the wave that I picked up because it is the most iconic figure that reminds me the most of the film. And still to this day, when I watch the opening sequence and see what's going on, it's really mind warping. It really, really is. And if you haven't seen the movie, I highly recommend it. It is very different. It is a very artistic take on film. And there's some really deep messaging behind all of the imagery and the sequence that they present the scenes in. Really deep stuff. So today we're gonna to be checking out this really awesome Ultimates. I hope it's awesome. And let's look at the packaging really quick. This is the mailer. It is empty right now. Not a toy. Inside the mailer, you find this really awesome monolithic looking box that really does evoke and channel that feeling of the monolith from the movie. And I thought that was really, really cool. This is kind of like a banner that just rests over it. And you can slide that right off. But this is just really, really cool the way it is. You've got HAL 9000. And you've got the hominid with the first weapon slash tool, you know, in, in, in history. If you watch the movie anyway, I don't want to ruin it. But really good stuff. Some logos. All right. And this monolithic look of the box is actually a sleeve to reveal your figure. Some extra hands. And the monolith is behind him. First time I saw this, I think I was in junior high school, and it blew my mind what was going on. We were talking about evolution and stuff, and this, it blew my mind. You know, uh, just amazing, amazing cinematography, just great conception of the story in general, in my opinion. Quick look at the Moon Watcher's bio. An alpha man-ape inhabiting Pleistocene Africa along with his tribe. I can hear the music in my head. All right, let's get him out of the package. All right, listen, immediate impression of this figure when I had him in hand. Wow, this is a different kind of Ultimates figure. It's a very different feeling Ultimates in the way it's constructed. And when I was articulating the leg, it felt so different, I almost thought it had a double jointed knee. That's how different feeling the figure is in our hand. And I'll show it to you when we do the articulation and the close-up on Deco. I wanted to start out here with that iconic scene from the movie where the hominid is reaching out and touching the monolith. So iconic. And I'll show you the hands and the accessories right now. We have an additional head portrait with a distinct mustache. <laughs> and I can't help but think to myself, wow, as awesome as this looks, I'd love to see Planet of the Apes Ultimates. All right, and we also have two bones. I can't really tell you which bones they are. This one seems to be maybe a femur. I'm not really sure. But either way, the way this works out is that these are weapons and tools, man. Weapons and tools. Watch the movie. Quick comparison of the two open emotive hands. You have the splayed out open hand for touching the monolith. And you also have a more emotive, reaching out, gripping, resting hand. And you also have a fist and a tool. You see that there is a two-tone on the plastic. You have black on top of more of a smoke black plastic. So you see that two-tone effect here on the hands. And you see that also applied here on the feet, where you have the deep black fur and then the more smoke black, smoke dark gray. Flesh tone, again here on the hand, here on the other face portrait. And that's another really well-painted face portrait. I mean, the pink of the lips, there's a wash on the teeth. There's a little glimmer there in his eye too with the way the white is applied. Really nice, super cool. In the package, you get the Ultimates figure. You also get the monolith and it is a hollow piece of plastic. You know, so it is a solid hollow rectangular brick and it just fits right into this base. And the monolith on the base is easily 
just over 11 and a half inches and outside or off of the base, it's a solid 11 inches. Very cool. So looking at articulation here, you've got great rotation. I mean, great rotation and it is smooth. A little bit of tilt, not much, not much at all. Up about that much, hindered by the hair piece in the back. You can look down minimally with the head. And with the upper diaphragm cut, you really don't get much. You get kind of like a wobble there. You do get great rotation at that cut and you can get a little bit of tilt to either side. Again, not much there. There is no other cut at the waist and there is no crunch. At the legs, you have an upper thigh joint that gives you a little bit of rotation here back and forth. And you got a good split. You know, that's a decent split considering the additional hair molding up here. There is rotation at the knee. I was surprised when the legs stopped there short of 90 degrees. At the legs, you have an ankle joint. It'll give you some toe down. Toe up is outstanding. And of course, you have a great rocker. At the shoulders, you've got great range. Despite having the hair here at the shoulder, but you have rotation at the shoulder, Oh, that piece fell off again. I might have to glue it back on. You also have rotation at the bicep, rotation at the elbow. You've got rotation at the wrist with the horizontal hinge. I had something going on here with the bicep portion of the arm where it was turned awkwardly. This back portion was to the front and it was hindering articulation of the arm. So I couldn't bend it this way. And you see that we do get close to 90 at the elbow there. Um, and it, that was the case actually in both biceps. I had to kind of hold this shoulder hair piece and twist the bicep to get the arm facing correctly so I could articulate. So just a word on that if you have articulation problems at the elbow. All right, let's jump into a size comparison for today's theme. And just to give you a sense of how this character looks against a few other scales. The Amazing Fantasy 60th Anniversary Spider-Man. I'll also bring out the Renew Your Vows Spider-Man, who is a much taller figure. I'll bring out a Marvel Legends Retro Collection pair of Sentinels. Just because there's a monolith and I thought of Sentinels and just also bring out a Motu Origins He-Man and our Moon Watcher has him in the height department. I will bring out a Mythic Legions custom War Duke figure, and he is a beast next to our Moon Watcher. And last but not least, I will bring out my 2002 Toy Biz Fellowship of the Ring, Sauron. I mean, let me give you a peek. He's a beast. I've had him packaged in a box for 20 years. This is a knockout. I'm glad I got it. And as always, everybody, I'm having a lot of fun rediscovering and enjoying the experience of collecting toys. And I hope you're able to keep coming back and share some experiences too. Until next time, everybody, take care.